In this video, we're going to look at how to use CSS to style our JSF templates. Now, CSS, Cascading Style Sheets, is great for styling websites because you get a uniform look and feel throughout the entire site. We're going to be using some of the Prime Faces themes to give us this uniform look and feel when it comes to colors and things like that. But in this video, we're talking just about using CSS to give us the navigation look and feel that we want. In other words, notice that the left and the top nav stays in place as I scroll the content. That's something we can do with CSS. Even outside of Prime Faces, that's something that is frequently done with CSS. First of all, we have to think about how CSS is organized, and we have this concept called the box model. The box model means that around any CSS stylable element that is a, a box type element, we have margin, border, padding, and then the content. So this would be like a div. A div, we can give it margin, we can give it any kind of border, and then the padding is what become, comes between the border and the content of the div itself. What what is nice and what we can take advantage of is you see that a margin, a border, and padding all have a top, left, right, and bottom side, and those don't necessarily need to be the same width. So we can make a very wide left, and then everything else can be very narrow. And we can use that wide left margin as a place to put something else. For example, take a look at this. Uh, this is something I grabbed from the Plant Places style sheet. Uh, but this is a fairly common concept. What we have is we have the content with a left margin of 165, which is this space over here. So you see the content page is free to move, and it gives 165 pixels to its left that it's not using. Now that 165 pixels is, is consumed by the left navigation, and that left navigation is going to stay in place as we scroll. So you see the uh, content, margin left, 165 pixels, while the left navigation has a width of 145 pixels, and it has a position fixed, meaning it's going to take this place, and it's going to hold that place. It's not going to move as the rest of the page scrolls. I see just a couple other things. It has a background color, which is that kind of a taupe color that you see there, where the content does not have a background color, so it remains white. So that's how we can define those two regions. Now if you take a look, both the content and the left nav have a top area reserved of 3EM, where EM is kind of like a relative unit of measure. So what's in the top 3EM? Well, you'll notice that the top 3EM is the top menu. That again has a position fixed and a height of 3EM. The position fixed means it's not going to move as the page moves. Okay? And the height of 3EM, that just says this is about how much space it's taking up. One other very important thing to look at here is the Z index at 100. That Z index at 100 means if we have an overlap between two divs, as you see here, the top nav and the content nav as I'm scrolling, the Z index of 100 will win. The higher number wins. So if the content were to have a z-index of 1 and the top nav a z-index of 100, the top nav would win and it would obscure the content that's going underneath it. If you don't set that z-index, you're going to end up with a funny overlap of the two divs, which looks kind of weird. Now, we know that when we're using a web page, a lot of times we have a mouse and we can point and click. So we can get tighter navigation and we can also put a lot more links on the page. Hopefully not as many as I have here, because as I said, I've overdone it a little bit on navigation. Now, on a mobile site though, we don't want to have that much navigation. On a mobile site, we want to focus on only what the user cares about at that point in time. Uh, and so we want to take away any extraneous stuff. In mobile, some things are meant to be hidden, the most important thing should be the screen that the user sees when first launching the app. Anything else like contact us or help or settings, that should be hidden. So for mobile, we might want to take away the top nav and the left nav entirely. And for that, we're going to use uh, a couple things. We're going to use a CSS style called display none, which means don't even show this. Don't even show this nav. Additionally, we can tune 
are CSS links. So this is the syntax to link in a CSS page. Link rel equals style sheet. href, that's a link to the style sheet. Type text CSS. But the neat thing is we can have multiple style sheets for the same page. And the media equals will say show this style sheet in this context. Media equals screen is the most common. That means show this style sheet when we are using a color computer monitor. Uh, media equals print means show this style sheet when we're printing or when we're doing a print preview. And I showed a little example of this earlier. If I type in red butt, uh, we're going to get results for the red butt. Now see if I just control P, it's going to bring me to print preview for that same page. And at that point, it switches style sheet based on this media equals print. So you see it takes away the navigation, takes away the pictures, and additionally it adds in see more details at plainplaces.com. So let's use a combination of this link rel style sheet media equals with these different options and the display none to conditionally show or hide uh, navigation at certain points. With that, let's take a look at our, at our site. To start with, I'm going to go to web content, right click and say new and then folder. Folder, I'm going to say CSS. That's where we'll keep our CSS. I'm going to right click on here and say new and then I'm going to say other and web CSS file and we'll just call this something like styles styles.css. That'll be fine. Whoops. Uh, looks, yeah, there we go. And finish. Well, we'll go ahead and go next. Yeah, that's fine. And finish. Okay. So we have our style CSS. Now we can go out and freely grab styles from any website, to be honest with you. If I go to plantplaces.com, if I go to the real plantplaces.com here on my uh, virtual machine, it will load up. And then in Chrome, I can hold control and press U, and that's going to show me uh, the source of this page in HTML. You see that styles.css is linked, so I can click on it. And as I click on it, I'm going to look for those things we looked at in our presentation. Uh, we have top menu. Okay, we'll go ahead and grab that. The little hash there means I apply to IDs. So uh, I'll show you that in just a minute when we take a look at our CSS. It, actually, at our index HTML. So top menu, that's not a good selector yet. We'll fix that in just a moment. Uh, side menu, okay, control C and control V. And then we also wanted content, didn't we? So we're going to look for uh, content. There we go. Okay. Now, what you see in CSS, I said that word selector just now, and I didn't really describe it. What you see in CSS is typically a selector followed by rules. The selector is this word that precedes the open curly, close curly. Okay. A hash symbol or pound symbol means that this applies to IDs. A dot symbol means this applies to classes. Now, what do I mean by that? Not a Java class. I'll warn you that. Not a Java class. What that means, if we take a look at our template, is do you see div ID equals top? That's an ID. An ID can only be used once in an HTML page where a class can be used multiple times. That's the essential difference between the two. An ID is a unique identifier, where a class is a grouping of components that share the same style. See here we have ID equals top, ID equals left, and ID equals content. So we need to change those selectors just a little bit. Uh, ID top menu, we're going to change that to just top with the hash symbol. Pound, uh, side menu, we're going to change that to left, and then content looks like that one's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and save. And uh, then the one other thing I need to do in my template file is I simply need to include the style sheet. So up in the head section, I'm going to use, uh, let's see, we'll go back and view our source here. Uh, I'm going to use one of these link rel, just like this. Copy that again from, uh, yeah, I'm copying it from plain places, but honestly, just about any page on the web, you can do control U and you can take a look at that HTML that's under the covers. Uh, I am going to say, put this in the CSS directory, 
Uh, actually, let's see, we're going to CSS like that. CSS and then styles CSS. And that does match up to the page that I made here. Um, we don't have yet we don't have yet this media attribute but that's optional we'll leave it as is for the moment we just want to make sure it's going to style this kind of how we want so i'll save and then we'll take a look so it typically can grab that those pages without needing to reload so i go over and right and we see that uh, it's starting to come together. We have our top nav here. We don't have enough content yet to scroll to make sure that that sticks, but we can add just some dummy content. The one that is causing us a little bit of problem is our uh, privacy policy in terms of use. So we can put that at the bottom of the page in a fixed manner, uh, or we can just have it follow below our content either way. I have a bit more CSS magic I can use here. I'm going to simply style. Uh, I'm going to use a selector that identifies to the bottom div. Position absolute means I'm not relative to any other CSS positioning on this page. We'll give it the same margin left as the content. That gives us space for the left nav. Uh, padding 5 pixels and bottom equals 0. I'll go ahead and save and we'll take a look again. And as I refresh, We'll see that, uh, sure enough, it hugs down at the bottom here, gives us our little copyright, and it still preserves room on the left for the left nav. Now, one more thing I want to clean up over here. The left nav looks kind of weird because the color is only at the top. It's not going all the way down the page. If I click over there and I say height, I haven't given it a height yet. Let's say height equals 100% and then semicolon and then save. Oops, sorry, not equals, uh, height colon 100%, and then save, and then we refresh. You see now that that color goes all the way to the bottom. Now I've made a couple other changes so we can test out our theory. First of all, I added a margin bottom to the content of 85, and also I, turned, I changed that bottom ID to position fixed so that it will stay at the bottom of the page. I need to give it a z-index still because you see that one layer is overwriting another. Uh, but that's okay, we understand how that works. Maybe a z-index in the background would be a good idea. Uh, I've also added just a bunch of dummy text to index.xhtml, which is our content here in the middle, just to show that the combination of that z-index and the fixed positioning of our left and our top nav allows us to scroll this up and down and it will not overwrite the top of the left nav. In other words, we've reserved space on the left for the left nav and on the top nav, we've fixed it to the top of the browser. We've given it a background color, which means it's opaque. And more importantly, we've given it a high Z index, a Z index of 100, which means when one div overrides another, the one with the higher Z index wins. And if it's opaque, you cannot see the uh, div that's going behind and underneath it. On the other hand, this one that we made, we made it fixed and uh, we didn't give it a Z index, we didn't make it opaque, which means we can see what happens in that case when we have two divs that overlap and one of them's not opaque, one of them does not have a Z index, then you see they just simply overlap each other. So that's a look at how we can use CSS to smartly design a template-based website. In the next lectures, we're going to take a look at using that little style sheet trick with media uh, so that we can make a completely different layout for print. We're also going to take a look at some of the prime faces layouts. I look forward to seeing you then.